I watched you <laughs> dazzle us all when there was that incredible reveal of the expansion draft roster. It's great to have you back. And to great, deal with such a heavy topic, you spoke to Fleury just after this deal was reported. What was his reaction? Well, great job by both you and Panger there in the studio. I can tell you, you know, I echo a lot of Panger's sentiments and, and had a chance to play against the Flower for a long time, literally since he came into the league. And I was just blown away by him, but specific to today and speaking with him today, I was one of the first people to speak with him, and he hadn't spoken to the Vegas Golden Knights yet. And that's shocking to me. Uh, he told me that, he sa I said, Flower, you're traded. Uh, we see, uh, apparently I am. No, Flower, I, I, you're traded. Well, how do you feel? Are you okay? I, I don't know. I, you're one of, and literally I spoke to him for about six minutes, and there's a couple things to unpack. Number one, the, su the surprise and the shock about the fact that he was drafted. I think equally number two is the fact that he, hadn't spoken to anybody from Vegas. Number three, this is where you where he ranks among all-time winners in the history of the league. Wow. Two of those guys I played with, all five of them I played against, all are elite, best of the best. Of course, when you think of the flower and you think of, and I'll bookend what Panger was saying, the fact that he's done this through different eras and he's done it through two amazing franchises and he's done it with a smile on his face He's done it with distinction, with grace, with greatness, with elite excellence and expertise, and all the while having fun, inspiring people on the ice, and probably inspiring people even better if there's a higher category than Hall of Fame for people, he would be in it. So the, the fact of the matter is here, and I want to qualify this to be extremely fair. You've heard me say on our air on the NHL Network and beyond that I love everything the Vegas Golden Knights have done. I spoke to Bill Foley numerous times. He's already established himself as one of the best owners, not, not in the NHL, in the world of pro sports. And I remember speaking to Mr. Foley numerous times, but backstage at the expansion draft after the NHL awards, I remember speaking to the great Marc-Andre Fleury there backstage at the expansion draft after the awards. It's hard for me to imagine, at, per Panger, that this is the way his tenure ends in Vegas with him hearing about it through other people and not hearing about it through the team. And I'm going to qualify this. I know general manager Kelly McCrimmon said that it was pending the trade call and protocol dictates that they don't speak to players when it's pending the trade call. I think sometimes just in an instance like this, there can be exceptions to certain rules. I think Mark andre Fleury deserved a little bit of an exception to that rule and I would have thought for everything Vegas does, which is everything top class, top to bottom, I would have thought that they would have called him and even just said because they had the, that chain of communication all the way through. So at this point, you could have even called him and said, hey, Flower, listen, um, this is pending the trade call, but this is where we're at with this right now. And out of respect to you, we wanted to let you know. And you can see by the disappointment of Mr. Foley's comments, their owner, uh, the amazing Bill Foley, you can see how gutted he was over this. You know, Weeksy, I, I'm, I'm wondering now with the, the great shine that Vegas has come into the league, I mean, we're all thinking the same thing, I'm sure, but, you know, how do they, how do they go about maybe correcting, you know, this here? Because this, this hurts. This hurts for them, too. They're, they're, the, they're going to be on the defensive. So I, I guess where do you start here, and, and what is Kelly McCrimmon, and what is Bill Foley, and what do they do right now? I think you're absolutely right. And, and I, Flower told me today that he's at, at home up in Quebec for the offseason. I mean, this might even warrant, warrant getting in the jet and flying up there and talking to Marc-Andre Fleury um, and just saying, hey, Flower, listen, we owe you this. You've been an amazing part of our story. You have been the face of the franchise. You've done everything for us beyond what we expected from you as a goalie. You've exceeded that. Look at the history of where he stands right now. He ties the great Gump Worsley and the great Johnny Bauer, the late great, both of them. And I got a chance to know the great Johnny Bauer growing up in Toronto. And for this to be Marc-Andre Fleury's 17th NHL season, he wins the Vesna. And Panger, you, you, you mentioned this earlier, the first one since the great Dominic Hasek, your former teammate with the Blackhawks, to be traded in 01. That's 20 years. But Marc-Andre Fleury, I think they've got to get in the jet and fly up to Quebec. If you're asking me, Panger, that's what I think this warrants. Marc-Andre, you're a top-class person. You deserve better. You know, we might have had the baton if you're using – you know, the track and field since we're in Olympics right now. Maybe as we got through the first three runners, the baton was in the right hand. 
we might have dropped the baton a little bit once it got into the fourth runner's hand and we didn't have a clean exchange to you at that point to use a track and field reference having run track i think that's the toughest thing for the flower you're right panger this hurts vegas's brand top shelf mm -hmm. everything about them we're in the business panger you hear the same things i do tone you've heard us echoing the same thing every single thing the vegas golden knights have done in terms of treating players treating fans corporate partners quite frankly and probably most importantly is the way they reacted after the tragedy of the mass shooting in vegas the way they responded to the community is i mean vegas it was strong. amazing it was amazing it was exemplary so this the way this was handled at the end doesn't fit the profile of all those incredible things and you know what panger here's a question for you we're outgoing people we're gregarious people you know we're, we're very sociable people like yourself and i but we both had goalie partners as you alluded to earlier that have been a little bit ornery that do have a little bit of a snarl and quite frankly those players and those people don't get treated this way this usually happens to people like a mark andre fleury or your personality type or my personality type that's what's disappointing you know i was reading some um some of the tweets from robin lanner and during the course of the year uh, Kevin and Tony, I was I was really impressed with their relationship, and through totally. through all the noise going on, they stuck together, and I think they forged something rather special. And uh, I know that uh, you know there might be some people you know on Robin Leonard. This isn't a Robin Leonard thing, and you know Robin no, Leonard no. was traded there and signed a, a a good deal for 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 where it was in his career, and uh, mm -hmm. I, I think he's been a good teammate to Mark Andre Fleury, and I think he's going to really oh. miss him. And so it's just something to keep in mind there that uh, I think some people are putting some heat on Robin Leonard, and, and that's not exactly fair. Not fair I at agree. all. Let me jump on that before we go. Trons, hopefully they have time. Tone, sorry. Here's the thing. And, and Panger, you know this too. When you're in a room, or I know you roll, but when you're in a room as a goalie, there's a difference between players playing in front of you because they have to, because they want to, and because they love to. Mark andre Fleury, players play in front of him because they love to. And to your point, even with, with Robin Lehner, Robin Lehner developed a huge love for him. They won the Jennings Trophy together. There was a bunch of mutual respect between those guys. Go back to the clip, Tony, you remember being Stanley Cup final with Pitt when on the ice, I think it was EJ maybe, that, that was asking some of the questions down there and some of the other broadcasters, and they asked Matt Murray at the time, what does Mark andre Fleury mean to you? He started crying mm -hmm. on the ice. Mm -hmm. Who does that? That shows you how esteemed he was. Yeah. And in speaking of the great Sidney Crosby and some of the people in the Pens organization, we see our organization is not the same without the flower. Wow. Yeah, I actually thought if he did end his career uh, as a 37-year-old, that he would end in, in the black and gold and return to Pittsburgh. Oh. And, you know, so uh, I'm, I'm sure this is different he'll you know he'll settle down he'll think of things and he and alan walsh will go over things and figure yep. out if this is the best bet or maybe there is a an, another move out of this who, well that's who knows? that's where i want to go next you guys have done an amazing job talking about the the vegas side of this and yep. what do they do to repair and i i love that angle what about the flurry angle going forward like panger just said what has he said about the decision he has to make, whether to play in Chicago or even the possibility of not playing at all? That was so fresh, guys, that honestly, I, I really caught him by surprise, literally. And I, we, we were texting, and he was kind enough uh, when I called to pick up the phone, and he was certainly in a state of shock. Now, here's the question now. Is the, the great Patrick Kane get on the phone? You've got three. We've got three. Let's go for four. Does the great Jonathan Taze get on the phone? You've got three. We've got three. Let's get four. Does the fact that Seth Jones and Caleb Jones just get traded there to solidify the back end and to get a top-end defenseman and Seth Jones come in there inside of that contract, all of a sudden the, the Chicago Blackhawks aren't in the midst of a rebuild anymore. They're now looking to say, hey, listen, maybe we can be disruptors in the Central Division with the divisions going back to their um, typical kind of alignment. Maybe we can be disruptors in uh, in Chicago right now. We've got an elite goalie. We've got a top end D, and they saw some cap room for Stan Bowman to, to operate with. So maybe this changes things, fellas. I don't really know. Uh, by where the complexion of these ads, it certainly changes the team. 
But as far as what the Flowers' uh, intentions are, he's certainly going to spend time, as Alan Walsh had tweeted his agent, he'll spend time uh, with his wife and his family kind of revising the plan of, of, of what he wants to do. But he's going to have to process this going forward. But he will be going to, obviously, a historic franchise, Panger, your, your beloved Blackhawks, potentially speaking. I'll let, I'll let him know that maybe that number 40 would look good on him and not 29. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm sure he'll get more exactly. than 27 wins there. I tell you that. <laughs> he, might, he, might have to buy, he might have to buy you a Rolex or an Ottawa RCA. Oh, right. Weeks here are the best. Rocket. Thanks so yeah, much but, for your information, yeah. insight. Very yeah. few people could have gotten him to pick up the phone. You're one of those people. Very impressive. Uh, thanks so much, guys. Thank you so much. And thanks to all the fans that watch us on the network. And I'm just going to end with this. Uh, Let's, let's keep the person that is Marc-Andre Fleury. The goalie stuff, as Panger said, that sorts itself out. But let's keep the person that is Marc-Andre Fleury uh, in our minds and our thoughts right now as he continues to process this.